I am sick and tired of government by corporations, okay? That's what we've got here. That's what we've got when we've got Democrats running as Republican light because they want to get corporate money, and, we, and we're running against real, real Republicans or Tea Party. So that's what makes this caucus so important. We are the biggest caucus in this party. We, uh, when, six years ago, when I started coming to these meetings, we were the red-headed stepchild of the party. We were big, but nobody paid attention. And we're still big. And look at how many people who are running later this afternoon are calling themselves progressives. Many of them I have never seen in one of these meetings. So they obviously know that being a progressive is an important thing, and that's why you guys are important to this party. And I think that we need to work smarter, and we need to do our research, and we need to work together. And I think that uh, Scott and I are committed to this whole idea of the 39 and helping you guys communicate with each other and helping you organize at the, at the lower levels, you know. I mean, we have to be smarter about fighting the dark money. And we have to get with technology. We have to be on board with Twitter and Facebook and things like that. And, to, to make ourselves more cohesive, you know? So we don't have the money, but we got the numbers. Isn't that what the doors said? Yeah, you know? <laughs> so we really we really have to revive this this party, and I think this caucus can do it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Last year with the uh, SB 1062, that got a lot of people out, right? But there were all kinds of other bad bills that nobody showed up for. Or it was it was Dan O'Neill and Barbara Noss and maybe a couple of other people, and that was it. And so I would like to see us, you know, have a better communication so, and sort of a rapid response system. Uh, one of the things that I was talking with Mariana Spear, is Mariana still here? No, she's at another meeting. Okay, so Mariana Spear is with LD10, and LD10 is having Arizona Advocacy Network come down to Tucson to sign up a bunch of people on that automated system where we can comment on bills. You don't have to drive to Phoenix anymore to do that sort of thing. And so I would think that people in Pima County, we might want to latch on to what LD10 is doing, and maybe other counties would want to do that also, or L other LDs, because if we can start deluging them with comments, you know, like, for example, Len Clark uh, on our Facebook page the other day, he was at one of the financial institution committee meetings, and they're getting ready to dole out cash with uh, in sort of low interest or no interest bonds. And it's like, is that governing in the in the interest of the people? No, we don't have cash to give away to more people who just want to start up some random business. We need our schools back. They need to pay yeah. back the schools, you know? And, and we need to watch them. They're, they're, we need something like they have the Moral Mondays in North Carolina. We really need something like that to keep an eye on those guys because the, the picture that Glenn shared, there was like a couple of lobbyists in the audience and him, and that was it. And it was all being done with no reporters, because no, none of the newspapers have reporters anymore, right? The, you know, the, what we hear in the newspaper in Tucson is the legislature, according to the Capital Times, which is a subscription service, it's like $200 a year or something like that. So in other words, we have no news about what they were doing. So we really need to stay active, we need to watch them, we need to show up in Phoenix uh, if we have to, and, and do those uh, the online comments through that system. And so I think that uh, you know we, we need to keep in contact with each other through his newsletter, through maybe meetings on the local level. I also think that there's opportunity for us, and I know a lot of you are already members of either PDA or DFA or Move On or these other liberal groups like the Sustainable Tucson, things like that. And I think that it's, it's good for us to be involved in those groups also, you know? I mean, we can be messengers. I don't want to say we don't need money, but we don't need as, maybe as much money as we think. I think TV commercials are overrated, you know? I think grassroots, uh, social media, Twitter, Facebook, that kind of stuff, we need to be smarter and use that stuff more. And that's what we want to help us do. Yeah. Has anybody actually looked at the the video that we placed on YouTube for the first opening session. A couple of few people. Yeah, we do have a YouTube. That's one of the things that we're working on is trying to. Yeah, you can go to the Arizona uh, Progressive Caucus Facebook group, and uh, we have a page also. It's pinned, pinned post. It'll take you right to the YouTube channel, which we're. It's just brand new, so it doesn't have a lot of the stuff that we're going to put onto it, like uh, the logos and this, that, and the other. But we're going to get there. Um, but yeah, we, we've got YouTube started. We're going to start. Um, one of the concepts is, is to have uh, little uh, PSAs, public service announcements, like uh, who is the Progressive Caucus of Arizona? 
and actually have interviews from people from the caucus in the actual video and cut it into an actual almost like commercial type of video, put it on YouTube and then try getting it out so that people can actually see who we are and what we follow and what we do and what we believe in. And maybe we might start seeing a lot of people coming back to the left. And that's what we really need to kind of focus on. Tell them how many people we lost in the last year. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I'm new to this whole thing, a uh, new state rep. Um, have you talked about progressive ballot issues? You know, it seems like 122 and all these crazy things that have gone through. Hey, is it going to be part of the discussion to come up yes. with some issues like minimum wage or, or equal uh, equal wages for, for, you know, things like that that, that might energize our base um, in the future? One those are things that we could do, but we can't just talk about them here three times a year. Right. If you want to do ballot initiatives, that takes a lot of signatures. Uh, if the signatures are based on like how many people voted in the last election, and since there weren't very many people voted, you don't need as many signatures to get something on the 2016 ballot. Right. We have no brand. There's no messaging <coughs> consistent. You ask 100 Democrats what, it, what the party stands for, you'll get 100 different answers. And whenever you point out the, 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 the problem with that, the response is the Will Rogers line that I'm not a member of. There's, there's a pride in the Will Rogers description. I'm not a member of, a, of an organized party. I'm a Democrat. We have to end that. I fight against that every opportunity. We've been in Sedona, we've actually, a group of us, have bought time on radio stations because the, the media has become a tool of, of propaganda for the right. So we've actually bought a 45-minute radio show every Monday called Democratic Perspective. And we try to, to counter the, uh, you know, the, the BS that the, the, the rest of the media, the propaganda. It's very inexpensive, and it does make a difference. Sedona is blue. It wasn't original. It, it's making a difference, and I don't, we get zero support from the state party. We get zero support from the national party. We have no branding, and we have the same idiotic consultants, you know, <laughs> at the national level being paid millions of dollars to pay. Yeah, no, that's Why that's great. And actually, uh, Scott has a uh, radio show. I right? we have my, my wife and I have an internet radio show. And, and, and Roman has a show on KFNX. KFNX. So it used to be the one Well, Steve Leal used to have a radio show. But we're also talking about how how we could use like Access Tucson. Uh, Phil Lopez, who's not here, and Paula Bowd, uh, they both have a, a show on Access Tucson where they go in and tape it, and then it can be shared on YouTube and things like that. So we're looking at how can we use the media that's available to us to, to try to, to consolidate our message.